let's go back for a moment here. And I, I've talked about this with the three of you, I know, many times. Uh, when I was at Valparaiso, I mean, I, I, I know the mural of the shot. So just for those that aren't as well versed, let's go back to the play, Homer. Carter pressuring. It's to Jenkins, to Drew for the win. Gone! Oh! He did it! Bryce Drew did it! Valpo has won the game! A miracle! What was the play against Ole Miss as it was designed ultimately for Bryce to hit the game-winning shot, which is still goes down as one of the most iconic game-winning shots in NCAA history? Very easy to set up because we knew we wanted Bryce to shoot the basketball, uh, being the best shooter on the team. So that, that was a, a good starting point to begin with. And uh, as, as people know, it's, it was called Pacer because that year we used for special situations, game ending situations, we used pro names. And so uh, from uh, Indianapolis, uh, we just used Pacer. So when, when people see the shot, uh, they look and they and it looked like I was 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 praying, maybe a little bit of praying, but what I was thankful for that the players with 2.5 seconds looked over and they said pacer. And so my job as a coach, I thought I, it was over. You know, they knew what to do. They did not need me there. So I was very proud that they knew exactly what to ru uh, run. They ran to the positions. And of course, what you and all of the fans and people saw was the best, Andy, the best that play has ever run. Even in practice, very seldom could we get the two passes to get it into Bryce's hands. And then when we got it into his hands, it didn't always go in. So it was wonderful and uh, uh, to have that moment where everything went perfectly and the ball was in the air and the clock goes off and the ball goes through and we win by one. So uh, only God could enter in put that script into action. Scott, from your vantage point as an assistant, what did you see? <laughs> a lot more prayer, I guess, than my dad had going on. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, uh, to me, it was, I, I remember showing up at that game and it was kind of a culmination of a great senior class. They'd won three straight conference champions, excuse me, four straight conference championships, four straight league titles, but had never won an NCAA tournament game. And, uh, um, it looked like uh, 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 we were going to have a chance to win that game. And then Ole Miss in the last uh, 10 minutes uh, uh, came back, took the lead. And then I, I just didn't want it to be our last game without having a chance to achieve that goal and dream. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, Ansu Cisse goes to the free throw line and the SEC player of the year happens to miss two free throws. And then Bryce hits the three and then all pando pandemonium <laughs> breaks out. Everybody jumps on the floor. Bryce did show his intelligence. He had a 6'6 twin, Bill Jenkins and Bob Jenkins, both of them bench pressed about 325, running at him. He dove down, <laughs> hit the floor, smart play. Again, point guard intelligence. Truly one of the uh, special moments in the college basketball for me, for sure. Bryce, how much did you know that shot was going in once it left your fingertips? You know, definitely did not think it was going. I thought it was going to be short, actually. Oh, you did? Um, I did. And if you go back and look at the film, like in slow motion, it skims skims the front of the rim and then goes through. So, so, you know, thank the Lord it went in two things. I would say I learned one is from my dad is he always carved time for practice. So his preparation of always carving time. And then my brother is like, you know, he probably had 10 last second plays that we could have ran because he was always prepared with, with, with multiple plays that we could have ran in that situation. So basically my brother's prep and then my dad's, you know, carving out time to practice were very instrumental in that moment also. How did your life change after hitting that shot? You, you, you know, obviously people knew about Valpo. Um, they knew, you know, our, our name more because our team had won and it was all over, you know, the, the world. You know, we had articles and, and, and people all over the world contacting us. You know, going back to, to old type media, one of the most amazing things is when we pulled into campus from winning that second game, our bus couldn't even pull up to the gym because people were flooded in the streets. And there were over 100 different media outlets in person, you know, on our campus, shooting from the roof and, you know, all other areas. And, you know, where do you get that nowadays? You know, that, that's pretty uh, monumental. And, and that'll be probably a moment, you know, along with winning that game. But that moment going back to campus will be the two moments I'll probably take the most away. Yeah, I mean, it, it's still anytime we see last second shots, um, it's always in the top five uh, in the history of the sport. Um, 
Uh, certainly, I mean, if someone pushed me on that, I guess top 10, but it's always going to be up there without question.